following program was overseen by certified professionals. Do not try these stunts at home. Self-defense starts with safety. It is essential that before using a firearm that you seek and receive professional training. We weren't planning on doing a, a, a show for a while, and Alex and I went camping with the, the family, and... Uh, Might as well bring the 50 cows. We brought the 50 cow along, and at the end of our trip, we decided we were just gonna go out there and, and shoot a couple times, and... Just a couple. Just a couple, and uh, after about five shots, we were on the phone going, hey, we need to do a show tomorrow. Let's <laughs> get done. I'm Tommy Shane Steiner, and this is my brother, Sid. We're Texans and Americans who support and celebrate the Second Amendment, which makes all of us brothers in arms. Well, the very first few episodes were, uh, were sort of winging it. We had so much fun doing it that we were just going to keep going. Alex said, let's buy a drone and we'll shoot it down. What did you guys shoot it with? We shot it with everything. Don't hit it. Yeah, just shoot around it. Go ahead and open up. Damn. At first, we were all shooting around it just so we could see bullets whizzing yeah, by. Yeah. My brother got off a lucky shot and took it right out. The look on his face was pretty funny. Like He was like, sorry, I didn't mean to hit it. Just before the prices skyrocketed for all the guns because of the politics, Alex went into GT Distributors and got the 50 cal. Man, it was hilarious. He walked in and Alex started buying everything in the store. I noticed a lot of uh, ammo boxes in my office. We had an entire shopping cart, this massive oversized shopping cart, full of ammo boxes that said B-52 use only. It was the, uh, the old ammo surplus stuff from when they used to use when the B-52 used to have the 50 cal. The ball ammo to me was just a normal lead bullet. The armor piercing rounds actually had the tracers on them and they were incinerary. It was all in one. Red tip is the tracer. We were going to test out the thickness, how much uh, metal that the 50 cal could shoot through. And this is about the thickest thing we could find so far. It's, uh, it's about a quarter of an inch, but. I, I don't know if it'll go through that or not. All we had was, was paper targets, and I, we decided that was kind of a, a waste. If you're going to be shooting a 50 cal, we got to have something. To see. We're not usually like punching holes in paper. So let's start shooting. If you think about the amount of force it takes to bend that metal like that. So that's designed to go into a jet tank. That's the same one. Huh? Now look at the jacket of the bullets there. It just it fused is, to it's, it. It's on there. Some of, some of the, the round wow. fused to the... Sid, as it turns out, is, is, is probably the best shot. And he's not even a gun guy, so he, yeah, he's more into, yeah. into See, archery wow. and stuff. And I think that actually helps him out, because he has nothing to lose. He can always say he's the, the archery yeah. guy. Alex was concerned how it was possible for him to buy armor-piercing incendiary rounds. You can't manufacture them for a civilian cell anymore, but they can sell them in surplus. All right, safety on. Some of the best shooting done, I think, was uh, was Rob Dew. He was running the camera. He got behind there and like did not miss with 50 cal. <laughs> Rob, get off the camera. Come shoot the 50 cal real quick. I would be happy to have that guy, you know, 
cover me anytime with a 50 cal. Hit! Hey! I honestly didn't think it was going to punch through the, the I-beams. I thought it would, it would have probably made like a, a little dent, but man, it just, it turned into Swiss cheese. Look at that. Wow, what did that with the big black splat? That's that was one that went through, and then that was probably one of the, uh, incendiary? The, the incendiary tips. After it went through, then it ignites, and it caused that scoring. Look how the bullet looks. That was the thickest steel that we could find, and yeah. we, we got two of them and put them together. We're putting that up there to see if it'll go through. Hmm. It's made easy work of that. Did you see that? It went through both of them. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I-beam when there's a 50 cal present. Coming up, we give a new meaning to Beam Me Up Scotty. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Alex brought out this R2-D2 toy. So we set it out there and it was about uh, 600 yards. And we noticed that the, the guns were more accurate further out than it was close up. Oh. Matt here was in the army and he was saying sometimes if they missed something it would still knock it over and that they were telling them that if you shot a 50 past a man's head at about six inches, it would still take it off. And we just skimmed by the R2-D2 with the uh, tracer and look what it did to it. Tell folks about that. Burned it up pretty good. I mean, you can see where it's all ripped up, probably the round hit the ground, exploded, shrapneled out. But I mean, that's from probably just from the, the tip on the tracer, I'd imagine. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna get R2 one way or another. Sid took the first shot at the propane tank. He knocked the spigot off, igniting the gas. We also brought out my nephew, my brother's son, Rocker, and uh, he's been dying to, to do some shooting, and uh, we thought it'd be like a little much for him to climb behind the 50 cal, but we had a, a 223, and, and uh, we let him, let him loose on that, and uh, he, uh, he had a pretty good shot. Vice President Biden told women not to get a 223 rifle, that it was too much for them to handle. He said instead to get a 12 gauge shotgun. If you want to protect yourself, get a double barrel shotgun. As you can see here, it's not the best gun for beginners. Put that double barrel shotgun and fire two blasts. Here you see how 223 is perfect for children and women. You don't need an AR-15. You're hitting him, Rocker. It's harder to aim. It's harder to use. Nine-year-old Rocker was hitting bullseyes from the start with the 223 AR-15. One of the things that, that I was shocked about was uh, when we shot the, the tracer ammo, how the tracer will hit the ground and sometimes shoot straight up in the air. I didn't realize that, that a bullet would do that, and you don't really see that until you're shooting a tracer. I think that's what it took was the tracer round. All the times I've gone out and shot, and I'm, and I'm sure you have too, you, you just kind of maybe shoot and think, well, okay, well, it hit the hill over Maybe it bounced over a little bit. Yeah, but man, that we, tracer round, I mean, to see how far that thing would, would go up in the air. The 50 cal, we shot it into the ground, and it went straight up in the air. It had to have gone up a 1,000 feet. I mean, Probably pretty unpredictable. Yes, so it, it really uh, gave me a new respect for gun safety and thinking about what's behind a target. There was a few fires we had to put out. We bought some uh, fire extinguishers, and after every time we would shoot, we'd go out there and make sure there wasn't a fire that started. I think they were all used up by the time that shoot was over. For added safety, we would go uh, normally after it rained and 
soaked the ground pretty good because it was kind of dry out there. The one time we went out there it was actually raining. The first time to shoot the propane tank, I'd never seen one shot, so I didn't know if it was going to make a huge explosion or not. That was our first shoot. So we set the uh, fire extinguisher down there. After the, the fireball went off, immediately started to catch the grass on it, around it on fire. You shot the fire extinguisher and actually put it out. It just occurred to me at the last moment, and uh, huh. it worked. Which I thought that was pretty awesome. I've actually been trying to maybe do that on my life. Well, I've just been informed of why the, uh, the tank didn't blow up on our last shoot. We shot it uh, probably 50,000 times with uh, 50 cal 308, 223. We hit it with everything and it did not explode. We found out later that it was because of the temperature of the, how cold it was outside. It cooled off the tank and, and didn't allow it to explode. Well, the, the great thing about where we were shooting was it was uh, it was about 10,000 acres and there was nobody for miles around. So we had a, a pretty good safety distance. Also on the, uh, the shoot day, we, we decided that one of our targets uh, was gonna be Tannerite uh, attached to, uh, I don't know, a display I know, I know Alex was pretty excited, uh, I guess, especially after you guys' first time out there, so we have to get creative now. And uh, last minute before we leave, Alex is like, I need you guys to go find some cardboard cutouts of some cartoon characters or something like that. Well, we found Spock, we found Batman, and we found the Statue of Liberty. I just thought, look, we can't be blowing up the Statue of Liberty. We didn't really know how we were gonna set that up, if we were just gonna each take shots at it, but as we all kind of lined up, we all got in our positions, Alex yelled fire and everybody opened up and it was, it was pretty much a melee. I think the Batman was the one I blew his head up with the Tannerite. I think I hit that one. Sorry Batman. Sorry Spock. <laughs> the thing about Tannerite that we've noticed is that sometimes even if you hit it, it doesn't go off. We had some that we would find the, the, the the tannerite and there would be a hole through it. Even though it didn't detonate, didn't mean that you weren't hitting it. We don't always just go out there to film. I mean, most of the time, uh, we just go out there to have fun with friends. You know, the system tries to demonize gun owners and exercising your Second Amendment rights. That's what I like about this show. We're patriotic men and women and kids. Oh, yeah. I think the, the, the point of the show is to show that we're just regular people out there having fun and that, you know, we're not experts, we're not like trained snipers. Uh, I, I don't think any of us had any, well, you had military training, didn't you? A little bit, yeah, I was in the military, but you know, I'm by no means a professional sniper, no. Now we've got a lot of ideas that we're working on, but we want to know what you want to see. If people have ideas, they can, they can you know, send it to guns at infowars.com. We, we'd love to have some new ideas. Go out and have fun and also exercise this, our Second Amendment right and exercise our liberty to protect ourselves. I think it just kind of comes down to you're exercising your Second Amendment right, uh, showing your support for the Second Amendment, using your First Amendment right to have your Second Amendment. We're thankful to have a great sponsor like uh, AustinArcheryCountry.com, SteinerSteakhouse.com, InfoWars.com, and Patriot viewers like you. As we saw in Katrina, and recently in New York and New Jersey, the federal government can't and won't help you in a crisis. FEMA ran out of water and MREs in days. Electricity was off for over one million people and took over a week to return. The Red Cross, who was quick to beg for money, was then slow to react. Don't put it off any longer. Get prepared today. The InfoWars Shop is the largest distributor of ProPure water filter systems. And now, get 15% off your ProPure order with the promo code WATER15. While you're on InfoWarsShop.com, check out these other great preparedness items. The Aquapod Kit lets you store up to 65 gallons of water in your bathtub. The Pocket Socket provides you with manual electricity for small electronics like your cell phone. 
The Life Straw is great for your bug out bag. And check out our complete line of inner food products for great tasting and nutritionally dense foods that have a great shelf life. If you are looking to secure your home in a crisis, you can order Strategic Relocations the film, a great companion to the book Strategic Relocations 3rd Edition and The Secure Home by Joel Skousen. When the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has already passed. Get prepared now, so if a crisis strikes your home, you and your family will be secure. Go to InfoWarsShop.com and don't forget the promo code WATER15 